Thank you so much for checking out today's interview. My name is Nash Mackey, and today's guest we have joining us, Javan Langford. Now, for those of you who don't know Javan, he's a global speaker and a men's empowerment coach whose commitment is to grooming the hearts and minds of boys and men to help them overcome some of life's biggest challenges and to help them live their legacy now. And I just think it's an incredible mission. And he's having a phenomenal impact on so many lives through the work he does. I had so much fun with this interview today and I'm super excited to share it with you. During our time together today, Javan and I talk about some of Javan's personal story and what he's had to overcome in his own life. And also we touch on some of the biggest challenges young people have to face nowadays and what's available to them to overcome those challenges and so much more. So thank you so much for being with me here today. I'm super excited. So let's get into this interview. All right, Siobhan Langford, thank you so much for jumping on today, mate. So happy to be Fantastic. So, Javan, let's begin by just sharing with the audience some of your personal story because you've had a very, very amazing life so far and a very full life. If you could just share a bit of that with the audience, I'd really appreciate that. Absolutely. I think the story is where everything begins and certainly how it ends. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, my story as it goes, I'll give you some broad strokes. I grew up on the East Coast of the United States of America and I was in a city called Worcester in the state of Massachusetts. I grew up in a household where there was a lot of feminine energy. I grew up being raised with my grandmother and being the oldest of five and the only boy. So I have four younger sisters. Mm -hmm. My grandmother raised me because my mother struggled with drugs most of my life. My father passed away around the age of, I was about three years old and he passed away, had leukemia. And so with that, losing my dad and not really having a mom in the picture, I found a lot of love and a lot of my, you know, significance in my grandmother. She just really poured a lot of love into us. We didn't have a lot of money, but it was a lot of love in the household. Mm -hmm. I just grew up really living in my heart in a lot of ways, I guess you could say. Um, But in that experience, there always has its challenges, being raised, not having your parents, and really going through identity challenges. And in that journey of discovering my identity, I experienced sexual abuse. And it really impacted the depth and the direction of my life. Uh, so much so that I was really afraid of men that between losing my dad and experiencing abuse, uh-huh. it really affected me in how I saw men. I saw them as people who either abuse or abandon you. And so there's no point of being in a relationship with men. So for the majority of my life, well into my 20s, I was afraid to really connect and to communicate or congregate being in the vicinity of men outside of sport. And so I had... A, girlfriends and I had very good female friends, but I didn't really ever have a lifelong, you know, childhood, you know, friend, you know, friends. So of course that impacts you when it comes to business, when it comes to life, when it comes to friendship, when it comes to travel. And so I also had a very interesting journey. I found a lot of my identity in sport. I turned to basketball, I played basketball, I played football, I ran track, and ended up getting an academic scholarship to a school in New York where I studied business management in Spanish, eventually went abroad, lived in Spain. And I've since moved to Los Angeles, uh, where I reside now. And um, it's been a very interesting journey. But I'd say in the beginning of of all of our journeys, the stories really impact how we show up in the world. And my story, as it pertains to with men and really being challenged by them, I believe that, that our greatest challenge as men or women turns out to be somehow the thing that we're meant to break through and then teach to other people, which is how I've become a men's empowerment coach. Wow. That's, that's amazing, Giovanna. Thank you so much for your honesty and sharing that story with yeah, us. For sure. I really appreciate that. And so what, at what stage throughout that incredible story did you actually realize that you were supposed to be coaching other men? When, like when did you actually move from sports? When did you think, aha, uh-huh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing? Yeah. About, 10 minutes ago. <laughs> it seems like it was just yesterday where okay. I decided to, to dive into this industry. Wow. It hasn't been that long. It's been um, a little over a year um, when wow. I was coaching full time. Um, something I kind of loved being around people who were diving deeper into uh, you know, learnings of themselves and really being honest and authentic about what's working, what's not working in their life and wanting to grow and to build platforms and products and services that really supported people and having that same personal freedom. And so this last, I'd say 16 months has been a lot of deep work as it pertains to men's work from 
workshops globally, to doing online academies, to doing a lot of you know speaking engagements and doing private and VIP events and really holding space for men to break through, to congregate and to be able to communicate the things that are holding them back. Prior to this, I was an athlete. I played sports most of my life, got lost in the sport, like I said, playing basketball. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I turned uh, to the entertainment industry and did some modeling and acting, and it was a really great experience. But what I, I want to say is this. I want to say that it's, it's not something that just reveals itself. It's a journey. Anybody who steps into any arena, it's a journey into that arena. So yes. my journey has looked very different than that of someone who may be watching this or listening to this podcast right mm -hmm. now. And what, I, what I'll say to you, just to really speak into your, your question, how did I get here? I got here by trusting myself. I got here by loving myself. I got here by being present and building my awareness. Awareness mm -hmm. is everything. Mm -hmm. And I just knew that I loved people. I love people. I've always loved people. I love, I remember watching my grandmother as a young boy and just seeing how people were just infatuated with her and how she, you know, she listens generally, generously to people and how they just wanted to be around her. She had infectious energy. And so I want to be like that. I want people to see me. I want people to listen to me. I want people to be, want to be around me. Uh -huh. So I loved being in arenas where people, there's, there's engagement. I love traveling. And I also love learning. I'm a student of life. And so I said, mm -hmm. how can I make money doing this? You know, mm -hmm. and it just naturally it revealed itself to me. And after doing a lot of workshops and trainings and weekend events and book, book of the month clubs and masterminds, I realized, wow, this is something I want to get into. And the short of the long is this, that I went to Dominican Republic, did some really deep service work that opened my eyes to there being more happening in the world. I went there to feed over a thousand orphans, this organization. Wow called Natural International Talent Alliance out in New York City. They invited me out after they heard my story. And they said, would you come and you know, support these kids? And I went and I went there to serve them. And those kids have no idea how much they served me. And I came back to LA, I did a workshop for boys and I uh, called it Big Boy. And over a very short period of time, that workshop became a tour. I started doing a national tour, traveling from school to school. And a lot of men reached out to me and said, hey, I would love to connect with you. And as I connected with these men who were reached out to me to support the boys, I ended up supporting these men and I created this online community just to kind of bring these guys together, realizing that our boys are becoming broken men. Yes. And there is no safe space for the men to gather, for yes. them to be honest and authentic and vulnerable with what's not working because I believe that the world's greatest challenges, homelessness, hunger, sex traffic and all like the big war mm -hmm. drugs the big stuff mm -hmm. i think it's a result of dysfunctional men and if we can teach men how to remove the dysfunction they can become functional fathers and functional businessmen and functional friends and functional leaders in the world everything changes mm -hmm. and so in the process of speaking with these men i said i think i really have found my calling i think i found it mm -hmm. and it's just revealed itself and when you're under the protection of your purpose Nothing can touch it. There's just so much alignment and so many gifts and tools and relationships and resources that come flooding your way. But it's a journey. It's yeah. absolutely a journey, Nash. Yeah, that's amazing, Javan. I'm, I'm, I love, I love the content you put out too. I, like I've been following you for a long time now, and, and I am really inspired by what you do. So I'd love, like going back on what you said there, where you said you know a lot of the world's problems are probably due to men. Do you think it's because men tend to sort of, I guess, hold onto their emotions and, and it, like, and, and I guess my question would be, you mentioned self love before. What would you, what advice would you give to men yeah. to become more self loving? Cause I guess a lot of guys, you know, put on, put on a bit of a brave face always. They think they need to, but you know, yeah. that's not, not yeah. always the case. Yeah, let's, let's rewind that for a moment. Let's just really address what's happening inside of the man for a moment, mm -hmm. okay? After doing workshops and trainings on four continents and working with men from so many different backgrounds, a couple of things I've come to the conclusion of. Mm -hmm. I'd say these are the top four pain points that men are dealing with. I say that men are dysfunctional because they're at war within themselves. Deeply mm -hmm. inside there's a war going on. And that war is causing a lot of pain. You know, as men, we have men and women, we have a physical body and then we have an emotional body. Yes. And that emotional body stores all of the experiences and events that we've been through. And what I love about the work that I do is that I get to be with the emotional bodies of men, the men who are unwilling to be honest about their own stuff. 
you know? Mm -hmm. So what I've discovered is that most men are dealing with one of four things. The first is a feeling of inadequacy. They just don't feel enough. Mm -hmm. I believe a lot of boys grow up in households where they were never seen or heard. They were never looked into. They were never listened to. And so they spend the majority of their lives looking outside of themselves into a partner, looking outside of themselves at their employer for significance, looking outside of themselves for friends, for acknowledgement, just looking outside of themselves. They just feel generally inadequate. And it shows up in their relationships and friendships, shows up everywhere. It's all touching. Yeah. The second pain point that I see a lot is this, I call it the imposter syndrome, where they, I'm crushing it in business and I'm making 10K a month or 20K a month or six figures a year, or I'm just doing well. Mm-hmm. And I'm lonely at night mm-hmm. and I have no friends and I don't talk to my family. And so because I'm a rock star here, I have to pretend as if everything over here is working well too. Mm-hmm. And that is exhausting. It is exhausting to pretend. It is exhausting to pretend that something's working that's not. Yes. Okay? The third pain point is really significance by way of control or power. So I only feel significant when I'm in control. So I find myself in a relationship where I'm controlling my partner and she has to, what I say, she has to listen to me. She, 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 she disobeys me, then I have an issue. If I'm at work and I tell my employees something or I have an issue with authority, somebody who I have to report to, I feel powerless. I go into this depression in a dark space and I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to be seen, I don't want to be heard. They don't get me, they don't understand me. And so I, I can't handle this because I'm not in control. I'm not, I'm not in my power right now. Mm-hmm. And that is destructive. Yes. And the fourth is really something I think that we're all dealing with, including myself, is this inability to receive. A lot of men just don't mm-hmm. know how to receive. Mm-hmm. A hug, a mm-hmm. compliment, love, you know, kindness, a gift. We don't know how to receive. And when we don't receive, we actually break the cycle of giving. We break the cycle mm-hmm. of giving by not receiving. Mm-hmm. And so it's super important that we allow ourselves to be as unfit. To, to, to. Let me take it back. We as men, it's very easy for us to become unforgettable to other people, right? We can show up for other people and, and, do, and, and serve and protect. But when it comes to someone serving and protecting us, we know not how to mm-hmm. navigate that, yes. right? Yes. So let me, be, let me be unforgettable to you, but you can't be unforgettable to me. So it's a taker. So you got to allow people, right? You got to receive. When I allow, I receive. You got to yes. allow. So a lot of it comes from allowance. And I think yes. because of those four challenges, a lot of men are hurting. Hmm. They're hurting inside. Mm-hmm. And if they don't have an outlet to come, to come together and to be honest about that and to reframe those stories so that the story works for them, mm-hmm. It's going to be a long road. It's a long road. And I've witnessed it over and over and over from country to country to from heart to heart. I mean, it's, it's real. It's really deep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I love those four points, Javan. And I, I love what you said about the contribution line because well, that's what it is, the giving line or the contribution line because, you know, when we're contributing, we've got those feelings of fulfillment. We feel like our... And yeah, so being able to receive, and I, I've definitely struggled with that 100%. That's, that's a huge one. My wife will tell you that. So, <laughs> uh, so Javan, I guess working with all these people, you'd see certain patterns. Have you noticed there with young people, young men especially nowadays, that technology is having an effect on, on the way they're showing up in the world, like pretty dramatically? Yeah, technology has made us very loyal to lives that are so limited. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I, the best thing I can say is, is, is it's got us to a place where people are winning at what they do and losing at who they are. Mm. Yes, yes. Just as much as technology has served us, it's also handicapped us in a way that we have become so dependent on a device and not on the divinity of what it means to be a human, to be able to connect with another being, to listen generously, to love, to hug and to hold, to the, the, the affection, you know, the, the apathy, it's just, it's just not 
there anymore as, as it once was, you know, communities, even families, they used to have, you know, family reunions and there used to be people gathering in the parks and mm-hmm. families would walk at night together. It's just that you don't see that anymore. You know, I see that I go to Spain and I see families walking and I'm like, wow, why does this look so foreign? Because it's not happening, especially in America. It's, it's, we, we get all the technology first, right? We're the, we're the fastest growing, mm-hmm. you know, country in the world. And it's, it's hard to watch. It's really hard to watch. It's hard to know that I'm participating because me too. My business runs off of this three by two device that I call a cell phone. It's like, yes. you know, and the phone breaks or something happens, it cracks, and my whole world comes crashing down because I may have a client or I may have, I have to respond to my Facebook or my Instagram. Yeah. And, you know, how many likes do I have? You know, I'm, I'm in the rat race too. Mm-hmm. I'm in the rat race too. And I, I do my very best to be conscious of when I'm allowing my device to run my life. Mm-hmm. versus I run my device, right? Yes. So allowing it to use me, I often ask myself, how do I use this? Yes. Yes, that's, that's, it. that's massive, Javon. And I guess I, I'd like to talk to you now about, about gratitude because I've, having watched a lot of your videos, you, you touch on this a lot. I'd love for you to explain to people why gratitude is so essential in, in our lives. If I could get you to do that, please, mate. Yeah. Someone said to me, I had a call, I had a talk with a friend of mine. I'm not sure if you've heard of him before. Lewis Howes. Yes. Yes. The founder of the school of greatness. I remember talking to him one day and I said, dude, I'm just going through a really hard time right now. And I just want to make more money. He's like, well, how much money do you want to make? I was like, I don't just want to make more than I'm making now. He's like, no, no. How much? I'm like, I mean, I don't know. He's like, what's your number? And I'm like, I don't know. He's like, well, there's the first problem. You don't know what you want. Mm-hmm. And then I said, okay, well, I, and I want to make $20,000 a month. He's like, okay, have you made $5,000 a month? I said, once or twice. He said, okay, have you made 10000 I said, no. He said, then why don't we make this digestible? Why don't you put something that you can actually reach for? That you can reach, you can extend your hand and it can actually come to light. You can actually experience it, touch it, feel it, and then build upon that. You know, wow. people go out there and they go from not making any money to I want to make 100 k How about you get a job first? How about you go through the interview? Yes. How about you go create your resume? Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. And so you go too fast. And then he said to me, after I said my number and we got clear on what that was, he said to me, he's like, I just want to ask you a question. Are you, are you grateful for what you have right now? And I was like, well, I mean, you know, I have a lot to be grateful for. He says, no, no, no. Are you grateful for what you have right now? And I said, yeah, but I, I can always want more. Like I always want, I don't, I don't want to settle. Like I don't, I'm, I don't know how to answer the question, Lewis. And he goes, he says, Javon, hesitation is a no. You're not grateful. Mm. And he says, what you appreciate will appreciate. Wow. That which you appreciate will appreciate. Mm-hmm. And it was a really powerful moment for me because I realized that I, although I had a lot to be grateful for, I was not expressing that gratitude, not physically, mm. not verbally, not emotionally, and certainly not energetically. And that's why I was clogging, I was blocking a lot of money from coming into my life. So I had a lot of honest conversations with myself. And um, I asked some really powerful questions. I asked myself a lot of powerful questions like, why am I blocking money? Mm -hmm. Why do I have a destructive relationship with money? Why Why have I yet to heal my relationship with money? Why do I believe I'm so undeserving of abundance? And just really go deeper and like, what is it? And I realized that a lot of it had to do with my upbringing. That growing up in a house, I would not, would not a lot of money. And so when money came, I gave it away because I didn't know how to hold it. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how to keep it here. I didn't think I deserved it. And when it came, it had to go as far as I knew. So I have it. Let me give it. I have it. Oh, here, mom, here's some money. Oh, let me buy some sneakers. Oh, let me go to Florida. Oh, let me. And I would just throw it away because I didn't know how to hold it. I didn't have the tools to hold the money. And, so, and that happens a lot. Sometimes mm-hmm. for some people it's not money. Some people it's a relationship. They get a relationship to find the person they love and they figure out a way to sabotage it. Some people it's a job. They get the job and they sabotage it. And they, they, you know, they, 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 they connect with their dad and they sabotage it. Or, so they just continue to sabotage it. If you don't know, yeah. if you're not aware, then you know, it could be a very long road. 100%. And I guess it's like when you see someone win the, win the test lotto, for example, or the lottery. You know, they get all that money and they don't know how to handle it. They've not sort of grown to that person. And I've noticed something, I'm not sure if you can relate to this, but people seem, when, you, when you're coaching people, quite often they tell you about these lofty goals they've had and, and visions they've got. And that's important. But they set such a big goal and they compare where they are to the end, that end 
end result and they actually scare themselves out of it. They look at that end, end vision, they t say like, a, I don't know, like an example was, was a lady who uh, I was working with not long ago and she wanted to be a ballerina, but she, she didn't want to do any fitness whatsoever yeah. and she didn't look after her health. Wow. And, 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 she had, and she was frustrating over this end result and she's like, you know, I could never fit into that dress. And, and all of that. And, and it's, it, it starts with, you know, the, the daily trip to the gym, the daily walk around the block. And, and you know, it's, it's those little things you can achieve and you focus on achieving them. And, and you know, that's, that's how you get there. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a very powerful point. Siobhan. I love it. Yeah. yeah. And I'd, I'd love to touch on, obviously, you've built such a powerful movement around what you do. Could you share with us a little bit about building a movement like a movement that has a positive impact on other people's lives. Like for anyone out there who wants to do something, whether it be for a business, whether it be just trying to make a difference, what's the best way for anyone to sort of yeah. get out there nowadays? And, and, and yeah, yeah. yeah that's a great question. Yeah. I, I believe that. Let me just first preface what I'm about to say by saying this. Yeah. I believe that if you're not a part of a movement or leading a movement, you're doing everything wrong. Mm, wow. Let me, just, let, me just, let me just throw that out there for a second, okay? Let me just mm. drop that mic in the middle of the table and just say that. With that said, movements begin with a moment. We all have those moments where we say, man, that would be cool if there was some app that could pick you up at your doorstep if you just dial and you put your address on your phone. You know, that would be, it would, it would be so cool if, you know, there was a place that there were a bunch of businesses that worked in the same place and we only paid a small fee per month to go there. You know, it would be cool if there was a place where you can get food super cheap, super quick. It may not be the best quality and call it fast food. It would be cool if we have those, it would be cool moments. If yep. Yep. some people act on them, some people act on them and they build McDonald's, some people act on them and they build Uber, some people act on them and they build Twitter. They act on the moments. And when you don't honor the moments, you can't create the movement. And so for me, what's been really big on me, it was as a leader, it's important that you take what's on your mind and put it on the hearts of everybody you come into contact with. Mm -hmm. And so that's something I have mastered. I'm in the process of mastering is taking what I'm creating and making, enrolling you in it. You don't even have no, have no idea what it is. Mm -hmm. I love that because I'm so passionate about it. And people are inspired by passion by energy we're driven by energy and so being a part of a movement requires that you to first honor your moments the problem is that most people are waiting for the right moment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes and with that said what i what i want to say is that the right moment is also waiting for you to stop waiting for the right moment mm -hmm. and it's just massive action and last year uh, December, actually 2015, I sat down and it was in the process of, you know, mind mapping the, the year out. I sit down every December and really use that month to like get clear as to what this year, what am I committed to this year looking like? Mm -hmm. What am I creating this year? And I wrote down, I'm going to do a workshop and travel. I'm going to live three months out of the country. I'm going to have a hundred medical notes in my workshop. I'm going to launch an online academy. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to learn another language. I'm going to take salsa classes. I'm going to take piano classes. I just put all these things down. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make $20,000 a month. And I, all these things I put down on my thing. And when you write the vision and make it plain, it just something special happens. Something special happens. The people just tend to show up. Mm -hmm. The opportunities just tend to present themselves. The emails get returned. The phone calls come through. It just, it all happens. You just happen to be at Starbucks on the same day, same time as the person you needed to connect with. Yeah. And it's just really powerful. And so I'd say a movement is extremely important. And when you step into a movement, someone who doesn't know how to, or is not a part of the movement right now, and you're saying, well, Javon, how do I do that? You got to sit down and figure out what lights you up. Mm -hmm. What lights you up? Everything I'm doing right now, everything that I have my hands in, if I wasn't paid one red cent, I would still do it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that all is huge. Yeah. All of it. I have a nonprofit, a foundation in Los Angeles called The Mentor, where mm -hmm. we do social, emotional, and developmental leadership, 
workshops for middle school boys. I love it. Those boys are my sons as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. I have an online academy, the Elevated Men Academy, where I take men on a six-month journey. They're in a group of, of 12 men in, within the men's circles, and I take them through a powerful curriculum and teach them how to build businesses and really master their story. Powerful mm -hmm. experience. I love that. I would do it for free. Wow. I have a business that I, I travel globally from continent to continent doing powerful weekend events with men called the Elevation Effect. I would do it with my eye. I could do it with my eyes wide shut. <laughs> I coach one on one. I get to. I have the honor and privilege of sitting across the computer like this or in person mm -hmm. with men all around the globe and listening to them and holding space for them to finally surrender to the greatest shame, guilt, and pain and listen to them and then provide them with tools that have supported me in my life. What a gift. I would do that if I had nothing left in this world. That's what I would wow. do. Yeah. And all those things and more, and I have my hands on so many other things, but I would do it all because it all lights me up. And so you got to find something that lights you on fire. I get up in the morning and I see on my wall, the universe saying, I just imagine I have a white wall and says, how can I serve you today? Mm -hmm. Can I take your order? That's what I hear when I wake up in the morning. Can I take your order? And I place my order and I hit my knees. I pray and I get up and I get busy like I never got busy before. Mm -hmm. That's what this life is all about. It's about really allowing yourself to be served mm -hmm. while serving others. Wow. That's, that is incredible. I love that, Javon. And it's, it's amazing because like I've been watching your videos and it, that really shines through that passion, that love, that, that uh, place of, I guess, commitment to what you're doing. It absolutely shines through in, in everything you do. Every one of your videos has it. And I was just going through one by one by one. And it was just, I was just blown away by them. So I just want to ask you a quick question, Javan, based on your coaching method. Like some coaches go down the route of, connecting people with values. Some coaches work on people's beliefs more. Some people focus on moving people to the next stage of life. Mm -hmm. As a coach, what have you found to be the most effective way to kind of get people to move to the next level? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I feel that in many cases, people come to me for something way different than they end up getting. Mm -hmm. People will say, you know, I'm in a relationship and I'm single and I really want to know why I'm single. Mm -hmm. Only to realize that they're coming to me because they have a huge self-love or self-confidence issue, mm -hmm. right? Which is touching to that, but it's a different thing than they thought. Or they come to me and saying their whole life, they've hated, they've hated their father. They've hated their father and they just don't understand why. They don't have friendships with other men, only to find out that their mother was the root of the issue. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it, it's really powerful. And so I focus, I believe in my coaching, you know, two things. One, I'm an empowerment coach. So I don't talk about sex, relationships, uh, you know, how, how, to, how to find love or, or even money. So those things are up here. Those are the 30,000 foot things. But I get to yes. the root of it. And I believe when we're not in our power, that we live, we live and lead a very different life. And so I want to know what's causing you and what's taking your power and authority away from you. Yes. What's the thing? What's the conversation? What's the story? And so I believe if men and women, but I, I specialize in men, have clarity in four areas that they can really live their life on the next level. Not get there, but live there. Mm -hmm. That is really relationships is the first tab. And relationships with themselves. So I, I dive a lot about what is it like to be in a relationship with you? I want to know, you know, what is it like to hang out with you, Nash? How do, how do you talk to yourself? How do you treat yourself? Can you count on you? Most people can't count on themselves mm -hmm. and not of their word and want to figure out why that is. The second thing is health and wellness, not just physical health and wellness, although that is a crucial because if we don't have our health, then none of this means anything. Yeah. None of this means anything. Absolutely. But more the mental health. Like where are you mentally? What is the conversation that you're in? What is, I believe we all have a committee. We all have a, a critic here and we have a committee that supports that critic. And so in that process, how do you navigate those conversations in your thought life, you know, because your thoughts determine things. So what do you think about most often? You know, what are you thinking? What are you thinking about? So understanding the mental health. Thirdly, I talk a lot about money, finances. So everybody wants more money, right? Mm -hmm. wants more money, but how much more money? Mm -hmm. 
know, so I get clear on what the number is for their life. Like, what's your life number? What do you need to bring in on a monthly basis to really live the lifestyle, to eat the way you want to eat, to travel the way you want to travel, to be able to give back the way you want to give back? Whatever it is that you desire to do, what's the number that we need to bring in? Mm -hmm. And then ultimately is legacy. Legacy is the last and, and the most important thing, I believe, because a lot of men that I work with, they want to leave a legacy. But before you leave it, you got to live it. Yes. And a lot of men are not right. living it. Uh -huh. They're not living their legacy. And so they think that, oh, when I turn 45 and I turn 60 or when I retire, then I'll give back. No. I travel annually to Dominican Republic to feed over a thousand orphans. I travel to wow. Africa to build clean water wells annually. And I give back. I'm headed to Guatemala in a couple of weeks to do, to build a preschool. And I'm just constantly doing it now. I'm leaving it and mm -hmm. living my legacy now. That's and I want just men to know that the reason they're not living and leading is because they're not living and leading in their own lives. And that gets to change. Wow. That's, oh, I love that so much, Siobhan. Javon, I need to thank you so much for your time today, brother. And where can people find you? What's, what's the best place for people to, to look you up and follow the amazing work that you're doing, mate? Yeah, y'all can call me at 323-456. Your <laughs> <laughs> phone will be yeah. off the line, mate. <laughs> uh, no, you can find me online. I live online at javonlangford.com. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at Javon Langford. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have a burning question or you really need some support or looking for a coach, and maybe something I said resonated with you, email me at choosehire at gmail.com. That's choose, C-H-O-O-S-E hire at gmail.com and I'll be happy to have a conversation with you. I just want to talk, take a moment real quick Nash, and tell you that I appreciate you for thinking enough about me and what I'm up to in the world. And I want to acknowledge you for doing the work that you're doing with this podcast because it's messages like this that get spread that transform the hearts and minds of men and women worldwide. So thank you for giving me an opportunity. I know what it takes to be consistent in this. And so I acknowledge you for putting in the work, the time, energy, and effort to putting this out there and spreading the message. So um, and just thank you for being an empowered man in the world and really being in process and participating in your own rescue because that's what we're doing. We're, we're, our men are being rescued right now and we need more participants. Thank you so much, Vaughn. Thank you so much for joining us today, mate. I appreciate you. Of course. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for checking out this video today. I really appreciate your time. Now, please like this video. Please subscribe and please share this video if any of the content vibe with you today and don't forget to leave a comment below also head over to imnashmackie.com and subscribe to my website to receive awesome free content straight to your inbox i look forward to seeing you there